Carbon is officially launched as of April 20th. This video is all about strategy creation, and it will cover all of the strategy-related features and uses of Carbon at the time of launch. As Carbon continues its development, more features will be added. And if you're looking for an in-depth review of the trading tab and how that works, then sub because that vid is coming. Lots of these features have overlap, and I will be repeating myself a lot, so please use the timestamps in the description to skip to a specific section if you just want to hear about one thing. So let's get into it. How to create a strategy. Before you can even create a strategy, I want you to know that on launch day, Carbon will not charge users to create strategies. You still have to pay gas, that isn't a fee Carbon charges, that's an Ethereum thing, no getting around that. But eventually, Carbon will start charging a fee when a strategy is made, and that fee is 0.0005 ETH, which as of recording on April 20th, 2023, is $1. Now let's make a strategy. First, select two tokens. In our case, we'll be using USDC and ETH. And just like that, we already have a major point of confusion. The question we need to answer is, should I have ETH first? or should I have USDC first? And yes, this matters a lot. Now technically, there is no wrong way to do this. You can have either way. But if you're a human who is alive and lives on planet Earth, you almost certainly want to have the token as the first choice and the stable coin as the second choice. The reason you want the token first and the stable second is so that you get to see the price of ETH in terms of USDC. And this is what that looks like we can see how many USDC we have to pay in order to get one ETH. Let's look at what happens if we put the stablecoin first. Isn't that chart just hideous? The chart tells you how much ETH you have to spend in order to get exactly one USDC. ETH is worth around $2,000, so in order to get one USDC, you have to pay 0.0005 ETH. And technically, you can set up your strategy like this, but I hate that. It's so much easier to read the chart when you have USDC or other stable coins as your second choice. There is actually a name for this. It comes from Forex trading. We call the first token the base token and the second token the quote token. And typically humans want things quoted in dollars. Or if you're in Europe, then you might want them quoted in euros. And maybe one day we'll all switch to Bitcoin and then quotes will all be done in BTC. But we ain't there yet. And in the UI, you can see the words buying or selling USDC with ETH. And that's confusing and ugly. So we'll click the little arrow and buy or sell ETH with USDC. And that gets us to the nice chart that's easy to understand. Now we can talk about the types of strategies. The first type of strategy is recurring. These strategies buy low and sell high on repeat forever. Provided that the price of the token stays inside the range you set up, if you say you want to buy ETH for $100, you know, good for you. I'm, I'm glad you want that. But carbon isn't actually magic. It can't make anyone sell their ETH to you for 100 bucks. The recurring strategies cycle back and forth between two token types. Let's look at the two limit order strategy. Here we tell carbon to buy ETH at $1,500, and we offer up $7,500 USDC to do so. Now if ETH dips to $1,500, then someone would take our offer. Next, we tell Carbon when to sell, and this says, hey, if anyone's willing to pay me $2,500 per ETH, then yeah, give it to them. And here we can fund this strategy with three ETH. So if ETH goes up to $2,500, then someone would take our offer and pay us $2,500 USDC per ETH, and there are three ETH, so that would give us $7,500 USDC. Recurring strategies cycle back and forth between token types. When this strategy sells ETH, it receives USDC. And when this strategy buys ETH, it gives away the USDC. And this cycle repeats. Here's a little animation for what that looks like. I made this. Isn't it great? Anyway, you can see at the top middle that the balance changes between one token type and another. Something worth noting is that when you set up a recurring strategy, you can give Carbon directions on what to do with tokens that it doesn't have. For example, I can tell Carbon, hey, sell my ETH at 2500, and I don't have to give it any ETH. I can give it USDC and set a limit buy, and then set a limit sell. And Carbon will remember, if ETH dips and my order gets filled, Carbon will remember to sell my ETH when it pumps to 2500. 
This is not something you can do anywhere else as far as I'm aware. You can't pre-order your limit orders on any centralized exchange as far as I'm aware. This is a feature that is unique to Carbon. So let's make this strategy. It appears in the strategy list. Let's make another one. Again, picking the token first and the stablecoin second, so that way the numbers are easy to understand. There are two types of strategies, recurring, which has rotating liquidity, and disposable. Disposable strategies are less complicated, and we're going to cover all four of them pretty quickly. Basically, a disposable strategy just does one thing. It executes one kind of trade, and then it's done forever. And that trade is irreversible. So let's look at a disposable limit buy. First, I tell Carbon how much I'm willing to spend on my ETH, and then I give it the USDC to do so. And that's it. If ETH dips to 1750, my order gets filled, and I will have one ETH. And the trader who took my order will have almost 1750 USDC. And by almost 1750 USDC, I mean that Carbon charges a fee of 20 basis points to takers. And that means that you only get 99.98% of what you pay for. For comparison's sake, Uniswap V3 usually charges 30 basis points on most TKN stable pairs, meaning you only get 99.97% of what you pay for. Here's what Coinbase charges, which changes depending on the size of the trade. If you're trading less than 10k, they charge 100 basis points. If you're swapping between 100k and a million, they only charge a total of 30 basis points. Anyway, back to the disposable strategy. Here we tell Carbon how much we want to spend on each ETH and then give it some USDC. If the price dips and the order gets filled, then you'll give away the USDC and receive ETH. And that's it. The strategy doesn't do anything else. It's done. Like a plastic fork, you use it and then toss it. Next is a disposable limit sell. Again, I pick ETH first and USDC second, and I tell Carbon how much to sell ETH for, and then I give it some ETH to sell. If the price pumps and my order gets filled, then the strategy is done. The trade can't be reversed by some MEV bot. Here is a disposable range buy. ETH, USDC, I give Carbon two numbers. This is the range that I am willing to buy in. So let's pick 1500 and 1800 and give the disposable strategy 1000 USDC. This range buy breaks up your order into hundreds, if not thousands, of very small buys. The first one is exactly at 1800 and then the next one will buy at 1799 and then 1798 and it will keep buying such that if the price of ETH goes down to 1500 then all of the USDC will be spent. The way this works is just like a concentrated liquidity position on UniV3. You know how people deposit money and pick a range? The range buy on Carbon works almost exactly the same as an LP range on Uni, except that it's only going one way. It just buys ETH according to the curve, and then stops. Same deal with range sells. We choose our tokens, ETH, USDC, you pick a range, let's say 2100 to 2400, and it will start selling ETH at 2100, and keep selling ETH all the way up to 2400, such that when the price of ETH hits 2400, all of your ETH will be sold. Fun fact, if your range buy or range sell is fully filled, the average price you bought or sold for is not the average of the two numbers, or rather, it's not the arithmetic average. It's the geometric average. Instead of adding them together and dividing by two, you multiply them together and take the square root. All right, no more math, it makes me bored. Now that we're done with all four of the disposable strategies, let's talk about what you can do when a disposable strategy is finished. The first thing you could do is just delete the strategy. After all, the strategy only does one thing, and this would withdraw your funds to your wallet. The next thing you could do is add more money to the strategy. Then you could keep selling, or keep buying, in your preferred range without spending extra gas to recreate the whole strategy. If you already have the strategy and add more funds, it is much cheaper in terms of gas than deleting it and making a new one. Also, you can edit the strategy. Editing the strategy can turn it from disposable into recurring. Any strategy can be edited into any other kind of strategy. Disposables can become recurring, limits can become range, 
recurring, can be disposable, and range can turn into limits. It's almost like you're making a whole new strategy, except the gas you spent on creating the NFT when you deposited it the first time doesn't have to be redone, so it costs less gas. Some of our users have already done this on mainnet, and they said the gas cost to edit was less than half of what it was to create. So keep that in mind when ETH hits 5k again, and all the gas costs are insane on mainnet. Alright, more about recurring strategies. We already went over two limit orders, so let's look at two range orders. Recurring range orders work just like recurring limit orders, except instead of buying at one price point, you buy over a range. I tell Carbon when to start buying and how low to go. And then I tell Carbon when to start selling and how high to go. Add some funds, and that's it. Now you need to remember that when you set up a recurring strategy, you can give Carbon directions on what to do with tokens that it doesn't yet have. For example, I can tell Carbon, hey, start selling my ETH at 2500, and I don't have to give it any ETH. I can give it USDC and set a range buy. And if the price of ETH dips and my order gets filled, then Carbon will remember to sell my ETH if it pumps to 2500. And that is not something you can do anywhere else, as far as I'm aware. You can't pre-order range orders anywhere but Carbon. And here's a little animation for what that looks like. Okay, last one. This is the recurring custom strategy. This is any kind of recurring strategy where one of the orders is a limit and the other order is a range. So let's start with a range buy and a limit sell. Okay, let's play pretend for just a minute. Here is the price chart of ETH, and I did a bunch of cocaine and drew some lines all over it. Some people call this technical analysis. And these lines are telling me that ETH can't stay above 2K. It keeps pumping and touching 2K, but it can't stay above 2K. So I'm going to set up a range buy that buys ETH from 1850 to 1950. And then a limit sell, which dumps all of the ETH when it touches 2K. Because my lines, man, they're, they're telling me that it can't stay above 2K. And so when I see it touch that peak, I'm just going to dump it. So that's what this kind of strategy is for. Now let's do the opposite, a limit buy and a range sell. This time we're going to use a different token pair. This is the GRT USDC chart. This is not me playing pretend. These are my actual thoughts about GRT. I'm a bit of a GRT fanboy. And this isn't financial advice. Personally, unironically, I believe that GRT just isn't going to go below 10 cents. In my heart, in my soul, in my shoe, whatever. I don't think it's going below 10 cents. So I put in limit buys for GRT at 10.5 cents. And then I put in a range sell for GRT from 15 to 18 cents. And I've been doing this, like for real in my real life, for six months on centralized exchanges. And it is so annoying that I have to keep manually putting in these orders every freaking day. And on Carbon, I can just set it up and move on. I don't have to stop in the middle of the produce section at 4 p.m. on a Tuesday to open up Coinbase Pro because I just got an email alert that GRT hit 15 cents and I have to manually put in a limit sell for 15% of my stack and then wait a few minutes for it to fill and then manually put in a limit buy for 10.5 cents again. On Carbon, I can just set it up and all of this is done for me automatically on chain. That's the real magic of carbon. It's the ability to take simple ideas based on your perception of the market and turn that into a trading strategy which just works. And that's it. This has been everything you can do in terms of strategy creation on carbon. Next time, we'll take a nice long look at the trading page and exactly what's going on there and what happens under the hood. See you then.